Uh, uh, Chris Jackson is what I'm going to start with you just because, uh, you know, came as a seventh round pick. It's not an easy time to make a roster if you're a young guy. And he seemed like he was kind of scrappy and, and aggressive all the way through. What did you see from him? I know Kevin had some really nice things to say about him over the weekend. What's your assessment of him after his first camp and as he heads into the season? Yeah, I think um, starting with the Zoom meetings, he did a great job of retaining information um, and really, uh, you know, trying to understand how to be a pro in those Zoom meetings, right? Because you can get distracted. Uh, you're not face-to-face -face with someone. We're not going out and practicing. So he really was able to take that information. And even though we didn't practice it, he was able to retain that. And then uh, once we got here in camp, <clears throat> you know, he showed a good ability uh, to take the um, meetings to the field and then the, uh, you know, individual practice work that we did and then take those individual uh, practice reps to team reps. And, uh, you know, he did a good job with that um, and, and has shown uh, a good ability to do the things that we need him to do um, and, and was able to earn a roster spot. Very proud of him and the way he's handled himself these first couple months. And I asked Terrell this a minute ago just about how much time he spends during the week, maybe on game day, motivating guys. I mean, these guys are pros. Been the, Some of the guys you're coaching have been in the league many years. How much time do you spend motivating them? Or, or as Terrell said, he's more of a truth teller. He just tells them what they need to do. I mean, where, does, where do you fall as far as getting guys jacked up to play? Yeah, I, I'm not sure it's about getting them jacked up. Like, that's probably – uh, more something you see on on a movie. Remember the Titans or or Friday Night Lights. I don't I don't know if it's so much jacked up, but but I do believe you know part of our job is to uh, take those guys someplace where they can't go by themselves, right? So as a coach, uh, you know to to try and motivate them. And and again, that's not jacking them up, but that's uh, getting the most out of them and, and being able to uh, play at their highest level when it's most critical. So. Um, you know, and, and that can happen in different ways for different guys, you know. Um, again, and it's throughout the week that you're motivating them and that you're teaching them and that you're developing them uh, so that, you know, Sundays is their day, you know. So it's not this big rah-rah speech, uh, <clears throat> you know, on, on, on Sundays, but it's continually trying to teach, develop, and inspire them uh, throughout the week uh, to get them to play at their best on Sundays. Thank you, Scott. John. What's up, Coach Scott? Hey, Duran. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Great. Good, good. Kevin Byer, three years as a team captain, three years you've worked with him. How have you seen him just develop as a leader on this team? Yeah, great question. So, uh, obviously, when we got here in 2018, um, you know, he was coming off of a, a Pro Bowl year and kind of his breakout season. And, um, you know, one thing that, um, you know, happens sometimes with guys is that, you know, they get these individual accolades and stuff like that. And, um, you know, that can distract them from the team goal. But um, those individual accolades for Kevin um, never distracted him from the team goal. And I think. Uh, if you're, you know, fortunate enough to be um, named captain once, let alone multiple times, it really shows the type of team player that you are and the type of guy they want uh, to hold everybody accountable, right? Because it's not, it's not easy. There's a price that you have to pay for leadership, you know, and, and he's willing to pay that price, um, you know, day in and day out, his his teammates have seen that and and respect that, and uh, I don't think there's any other true way to uh, to see that um, is whenever you're you're named captain. And then with Kenny Vaccaro, especially looking at that Ravens game last year, he was pretty much all over the place. How much do you guys look forward to being able to you know showcase him because it's kind of un underrated, like how well he could play as a nickel uh, back as well. Yep, yep. So, you know, I, I'm not sure who's underrating him, but as far as just in these buildings and, and you know, for me personally, just speaking for myself, uh, he, he is very valuable to what we do on defense. And um, it starts, quite frankly, with his knowledge of the defense and then being able to have him uh, learn multiple positions 
but then also not only learn them, but play them at a high level. So, um, you know, he, he's able to take, take coaching from uh, the classroom to the practice field and then from the practice field to game day, able to make uh, different adjustments, uh, not only from week to week, but in game as well. And so that makes it uh, uh, fun to coach him and that makes him very valuable, uh, you know, to be able to do some of the things that we like him to do. And with his ability to, to blitz, you know, that's something that's pretty potent for your defense. What is it about it that makes him a good blitzer? Is it timing? Is it just relentless approach, selflessness? Like what makes him so good on that blitz? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's, a, you know, an instinct that he has about him. Um, he has the ability to be able to slip running backs at times. Um, <clears throat> he has the ability to, um, you know, manipulate the, the protections at times. And, uh, you know, he just really does a good job of whatever place we put him at uh, blitzing, he's able to disrupt the quarterback. And at the end of the day, that's what we're looking for whenever we send someone to blitz is to disrupt the quarterback. Thank you. John? John, are you there? I am. Yep. Hey, uh, hi, Scott. Um, no assistant can, can escape the clowny questions today. Uh, I'm wondering uh, if you can talk uh, maybe about the, uh, the impact he might have on the, on the secondary uh, and the potential that, you know, you might not have to use those guys uh, blitzing as much, you know, which could also uh, boost you guys in the back too. <laughs> yeah, well, anytime you add a piece, um, you know, to, to the team, like, like uh, JD, you know, that's definitely uh, something that everybody's going to want to talk about. And, uh, you know, obviously he's, he's signed and, and on the team now. And so me not having a personal, you know, history with him, I can't talk too much about him personally, but just as far as any time you can get a great pass rush, um, obviously that's a defensive back's best friend. And so, uh, you know, anybody that can, again, disrupt the quarterback, like I was saying to Teron just a second ago, uh, you know, um, is, is, is valuable. So, um, you know, looking forward to, to all those guys, you know, uh, JD and, and the rest of the guys. Uh, and, and, you know, as far as the DBs, we're, we're, we are um, and we want them to be uh, a piece in all of it, you know, not just guys that cover not just guys that, that blitz, but being able to do all things. So, uh, but, but definitely, um, you know, when you get a piece that, that's able to disrupt the quarterback, uh, happy about that in the back end. Sure, and just a, a follow on a different topic. Uh, what, do you, what do you anticipate it'll be like? You guys know that there'll be no fans in the stands for at least the first three games. What, what do you think that'll be like, and, and how will it affect the players, or, or do you suspect the players will – you know, after a little bit, uh, not even think about it. What, what's your anticipation of what that'll be like for everybody? Um, well, again, you know, I'm, I'm coaching, so I don't, I don't know exactly how the players are going to be. Um, I think what we've learned in 2020, just with everything, is that um, we all have to adapt. And so, um, you know, we, we're preparing our guys the best we can for, for that new environment uh, that has less fans and, uh, that has a bunch of empty seats and, and all that type. So, so, but that's not an excuse uh, to do anything except go and, and play at our very best. Um, but just on a personal note, you know, I know that, um, you know, fans just in general, um, you know, make sports a heck of a lot better, uh, the environment that they create. So whenever they do have the opportunity to come back, I personally will, will enjoy seeing uh, people – in, uh, in two-tone blue, um, cheering us on. Teresa? Scott, with, with Kevin Byer, when you have somebody that pushes himself to try to be great, how much uh, does that help feed, off, feed into the rest of that secondary? Yeah, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's really whenever you're being able to be player-led, Instead of coach led, that's whenever you have something special. And and uh, you know, Kevin is a is a player that that um, leads our our group. And so the example 
of him in the classroom, in the meeting room, taking notes, asking questions, being engaged, and then going out on the field and, uh, you know, playing at a high level, practicing at a high level, preparing at a high level is contagious. And so, uh, you know, if, if uh, you know, one of our captains can do that and one of our captains can go down, do some things, you know, uh, anything that we ask them to do, then surely anybody else can do that. And if they're not doing that, then they have to look at themselves and say, man, why am I not doing something that our captain's doing? So um, it's great to have him in our room and, uh, you know, couldn't be more proud of the way he, he handles himself on a day in and day out basis.